Welcome back to Rebuild Series. This is episode number 116, and so we're here with the chickadee. The last episode, we went ahead and did a rescue. We took Triton, put it back in the bench, and got some fuel. So a bunch of stuff there that we need to get done. Uh, if you've been watching the live stream, so I hope you have been, I've been building a couple things. So I built a container mover. I want to get going with that. And I also built the shroom, which is a drone. So it stands for ship-based uh, remotely operated observation machine. And so it's going to be pretty much like if we need to go and search for something, we can send this drone up. And because it can go up to a much higher altitude, it can work as a camera platform. So that's going to need some work in the future here. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the map. So if we look at the map here, we have a rescue right here by this bridge. It's a red bush plane, radio felt, nine grand, three casualties. So we need to get back and grab Triton anyway. So we want to head over to FJ. That's where uh, last episode went and got a bunch of diesel fuel. As you see, we have 114,000 liters there. So we're going to go ahead. We'll fly across here. We'll grab this rescue. Probably go to this hospital right here, dump them off, and then we'll go up to uh, Triton. All right, so let's go ahead and get the chickadee here. So I need to loosen this. Every time you load this in, it leaves some of these winches in the, their last state. So as you can see here, the winch is sticking through. So we'll go ahead and we'll drag this up and get this stowed. I have a more recent version of chickadee that's all set to go. This one, if you remember last episode, was a little bit wobbly coming in. And I have since uh, I've worked on that a little bit and made it better. So let's go ahead and we'll get started. All right, turn that on. All right, so let's see. We want to put a marker for this mission. So that's right by the bridge. Let's go ahead. We'll put an altitude in. Probably only need about, oh, I don't know, we'll say 1,000, 1,200. 1,200, I think, is pretty good. We clear most of the mountains, so let's do that. And then we'll go ahead. We'll enter this in. And we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to switch screens to uh, the bearing. So it's a 037. So we're going to put 037 in there. And we'll enter in heading hold. Start to bring our rotors down. So we can start going forward. Yeah, this is an older version. I have a newer version coming. That is not where we want to be going. Uh, the reason that's not showing correctly is because I need to do that. So I need to press the GPS to switch it to GPS coordinates. So the new heading is 105. And so we'll start going forward here. You can see we're rotating. That's because it's in station keeping mode. So, All right, so I'm just going to rotate forward a little bit. You'll notice my speed starts coming up. Once my speed starts coming up, I'm going to be able to go forward. And we'll start adding some thrust. Theoretically, if I don't have any trim in my thrust, I can add thrust. So, again, this is an older version. I've fixed a bunch of this stuff. So, just add a little bit of trim in there. And that trim, if you trim your throttles if up down, it makes so my throttle doesn't work. So, why is this not going to that nav? There we go. Okay. So, nav GPS, I had to press the other one. So, a bunch of different vehicles are all set up differently. Start bringing the props back here. We're turning slowly here towards it. We're actually, this is a reasonable rate of turn compared to IRL, but you know, a lot of people will snap, the, snap their uh, planes in game and just make them really overly maneuverable that would make you puke in real life. So, look at the fuel. We're good on fuel. As you can see, I have a couple things left. That's all fixed on the most recent version. So, we're starting to turn over there. We'll get there soon here. So we're at max efficiency, so I have the prop at 100% uh, pitch there with the constant speed propeller system. It's a little bit hazy here. You can't really see all that well. We'll be there shortly. We'll be there in a couple minutes once we get facing the target. So 135 is our bearing. Go ahead and head over there, and we'll pick these people up. So it's been good doing a bunch of these vehicles on the live streams. If you're interested in those, you can always... Uh, look at them on my YouTube channel. They they uh, get posted right after I do the live stream, so you can go back and watch those. And uh, watch me build some of these things. It's kind of hard to build them on an episode. I still need to index this gauge. As you can see, the colors mean something. So, white is supposed to be the beginning of your flap range. The end is the max flap speed. 
green is supposed to be right here is around your stall speed. Stall is really not a speed, but for most functional applications, we think of it as a speed. Uh, your yellow area is your caution area. You only want to be flying in that speed range uh, with calm air, and then red line is max uh, V and E. Uh, that's uh, V is velocity, and E is never exceed. So that's your never exceed velocity. All right, so let's see. We should be getting close to this. I'm just going to quickly make sure we don't have anything uh, on that I don't want on. There we go. All right, and that's why I go around at 1,200. See a couple peaks there. Pretty high. I think it should be right in the other end of this. So we're going to start preparing. I need to go propful forward, and I'm going to start bringing my thrust back. I'm going to start coming up on my rotors. And so with the rotors all the way up, transition right into vertical flight here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just take off. So this is going to station keep. So it's going to use pitch and roll to go to the waypoint. I don't necessarily want or need that right now. So I'm going to just go nav, GPS, altitude hold. We'll leave the AP on that. Just gives me that uh, gyro auto hover, which all that really is is a smoother. It's as though you made your own pit. I can already see the airplane right there. It's as though you made a pit that, uh, you know, had a set point of zero. Set, set point of zero for tilt, uh, pitch tilt, zero for roll tilt, zero for yaw tilt. That's all it really does, and so it's uh, essentially just like a, you know, uh, just like a pit, essentially. That's why, you know, when you change the sensitivity, you're essentially changing the p-value on that. This is not... Uh, Currently, this is, you'll see it's a little jumpy when I let go of the down arrow. That's uh, this version. The new version already has that fixed. So it's working much better. This is the old version, so. Left over from uh, when I made the 115 episode. So let's go ahead. We're going to land here. I have to hold it down, which is a little bit of a pain. But uh, once we get on the ground, we'll be good. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to trim it down. That was the issue I had, was I had to trim it down. And we're going to go ahead and shut down. All right. Nice thing with those up there is I don't have to worry about walking into them. Hello, hello, people. How are you today? So I don't see any fire or anything. I'll grab you. How are you doing? You're not too bad of shape, actually. You're not too bad of shape. They're all, there are some interesting characters here, but they're, uh, don't appear to be in all that bad of shape. So. Alright, so let's get these peeps in there. And Unamas. Uh, let's get, oh, excuse me, excuse me there. Try to jump in. I have to do a little bit of a hoppy hop to get in there. Alright, good. Let's fire up. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get rid of that trim, and we'll go altitude hold. And it's a short uh, hop, skip, and a jump, so I'm not even going to put on the autopilot. I'll just shut that off, and we'll start uh, just kind of going in helo mode. We'll start pushing these rotors forward. No point in me really transitioning to kind of airplane mode. I can just put them forward a little bit, and we'll travel. Straight line distance is pretty quick, and then we... You know, we, we could go like 60-something, about 90, actually, I think, uh, with them at like a 45, so. A little bit, yeah, about a 45, we can go like 90, 85, 90, something like that. There we go. See right there, about 85, 90. And so that's a pretty good speed still, and we can, uh, that way we don't have to do a full transition. And I like hand flying a little bit, you know, I think it's more engaging, you know. See everybody thrown on autopilots all the time. It's nice to fly a little bit, you know. It's it's like any skill. It takes practice. So we're coming up on the fork in the road here. And so it's I believe it's right there, as you can see. Yep. I'm watching my altitude here. Go ahead, we'll land here and we will dump these peeps off. Alright, so rotors are coming back to vertical. 
That will help slow me down, and then I can just operate it like a helicopter. Again, the new version works better. So this is the auto hover is picking that nose up, and that's to slow down. You know, it's picking up the nose to cancel out that that um, forward motion there. I'm just gonna have got my camera everywhere. So yeah, my collective is not great on this, and I showed in the live stream why how I fixed it. So essentially, what I'm doing in this is a new way, and I think I'm gonna do most of my VTOLs like this. Is so. When your rotors are vertical, you pretty much, you you can't have your rotors over 60 RPS or the gyro freaks out. It's essentially, you know, you're just able to make too big of a change in velocity with it greater than 60. So what I usually do for my airplanes is I use my up-down arrows to control my thrust, to increase the thrust of my engine or decrease the thrust of my engine. And then with VTOLs, helicopters you use up-down for collective. And so the issue being that I want to use that up-down for throttle as well when I'm in forward flight mode. So what I did was I actually found a way where I can do both. And so I use the up down on the seat by turning them into buttons. I make them um, I use thresholds and I do sensitivity reset 100%. And so I can turn it into that. The issue then becomes so that works great with the throttle, but the issue then becomes for the collective it's too jumpy like it is now. And so what I ended up doing was I feed it through a couple up-down counters. Now it allows me to turn it back into nice granular movement up and down for the collective. All right, nice. So there we go. We got these people done up here. Excuse me. All right, good. A lot of eye patches in that group. <laughs> Very dangerous, the world of Stormworks. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we'll head to FJ. And we'll start pulling some toys. I want to get that container mover going especially. And uh, we may or may not work with the shroom. Might try to uh, fly it on. I have yet to put in the, I've yet to put in the drone controller, so we probably won't play with that yet. Uh, I'll probably do that in a live stream. End up installing the drone control in Triton. So let's go ahead and we'll fire up again, and we'll cancel out that. I won't have to do that again in the future once I get the new model of it. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll grab a direct to FJ, and we want to put this. Oh, do not do that. There we go. We uh, put this back in the workbench again because you know I have a newer version that works much better. All right, that is good. Let's go ahead. We'll start tilting the rotors forward. You know, some people go you know vertical mode, uh, forward flight mode. You know, as somebody who was a professional pilot, I want to be in control. I I like to actually operate the craft, so I want to do that. You know, that's very much what. What I find enjoyable is me actually flying the aircraft, so that's why I tend to not do that sort of stuff, as I want to be in control of the plane. And I have to hit nav to go to the waypoint. I changed my autopilots up. This used to be station keep, and I cated it when I first came out with this. So now nav commands both of these modes. So uh, what it allows me to do is when I press GP, that's for GPS, that will switch this over from radio to GPS. And if I do radio, it will do radio, of course. And it won't actually make the autopilot turn you until you press nav to put yourself in nav mode. And that's, that's pretty uh, realistic how they're often done IRL. We're going to let the engines rev way up. That's fine. We're doing 282 knots. Uh, I could actually bring the prop back just a hair, and you'll notice we can go... A little bit faster here. Maybe. I might have been right at max. Uh, might have been at max speed already. I, okay, I didn't put my prop all the way in. So as you can see, we can do almost 300 knots. Very loud. So there's about 300 knots right there. And I have to be careful not to over temp my engines here. So I'm going to bring my thrust down before I over temp my engines. So I can't do that for very long. So I'm just, I'm uh, bringing, whoop, whoop, whoop. Okay, so it's, what we're doing is we're in a hold. So it is automatically holding over the last waypoint. So this is good if I want to go AFK or something. It will just circle that last waypoint. So pretty simple there. All right, we're going to go into vertical mode here. I need to do this quickly here. I'm kind of screwing around here a little bit too much. And once the rotors are in vertical mode, it will automatically switch to station keeping. So station keeping uses pitch and roll to go to the waypoint. So uh, 308, 
Oh, what's going on here? We're having a problem here. Get out of that screen. Okay, it's fine. It's just being it's just being a little over rambunctious, trying to slow us down here. That's fine. 307. We want to go heading hold. Okay, good. That's good. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to take the autopilot all the way off, and I'm going to fly it by hand. So, autopilot's working fine. It was just, um... Again, it's a lot more engaging if I do the flying. You know, it's... Pretty easy to get bored, you know. I like I said before, my least, my least exciting, least engaging flying that I ever did was, you know, flying in the airlines because it's all autopilot. You know, you, you, you know, you, you can hand fly. I did some hand flying, like I'd fly New York to Boston or something, usually an hour or something. It, it adds extra work to the other pilot, so the pilot not flying has to do a lot more work. So you tend, you, you know, you it's tend to, tends to be a courtesy to ask them if they care if you hand fly it uh, all the way there. Or for a substantial portion, and then if they don't care, you know, uh, it's extra work for them. So it tends to be a courtesy ask, and uh, if they don't want to do it, you, you'll put it on the autopilot. But you can turn it on as early as 200 feet, and you can leave it on as early as that too. So it's it's um, you know, it can be very boring to just fly for essentially, you know, you're just turning knobs and buttons instead of actually flying the airplane, and so it kind of. Especially, you know, most pilots have a passion for flying, and then you go in there and you're not flying. It's kind of boring, so... I like to actually fly the airplane and and feel it and, and get a feel for it. And it, uh, It's part of the passion I have for the game is, you know, I like to be very particular about how I do it. And I want to get them as uh, realistic as possible. All right, bingo. So let's go shut down. We'll be able to put this away. All right, beautiful. So this uh, aircraft is working well. The new version is better. Um, you know, I fixed a lot of the systems, so that's working really well. All right, so let's yank this back on the workbench, and we will pull out uh, this vehicle here. I was trying to do a little bit of playing with it, but... So this is the container drone. And so it is a vehicle controlled via one of these remotes. And so we need to power it on. Let me just make sure, verify 100%, no infant electricity, vehicle damage is on. Okay, we're good. So this is off of, in this case, channel six. We're gonna go and I'm gonna just gonna jump on it. So it's one of my favorite things to do in game is to make small compact things because it requires a lot of skill and a lot of finicking and trying to get things perfectly right. And part of it is you have a limited amount of space. Now this is in the grand scheme of things, this is still reasonably large of a vehicle. If you look at the size of my guy, you know, this would be a big vehicle. Uh, not enormous, but it's pretty big, uh, you know, comparatively. And so there's quite a bit, quite a lot of stuff on this and it's hard to get it, get all these things on there in a small build. For example, microcontrollers, this has six batteries on it. Doesn't need six batteries, but they fit in there well. You know, it, it, um, I have to be able to put enough microcontrollers to do all the work on this. And so all of that is tough to put in a small build. So I really like these small builds because they're a challenge. You know, if you have something like Triton that's enormous, it's very easy for me to hide microcontrollers. Like I have a layer underneath the bridge that's just bridge microcontrollers. And part of it is so that I don't have lines going all the way across the build. And it's super easy for me to just put, put microcontrollers anywhere. You know, you get something small. If you've been watching the live streams, you, you probably saw me working on Shroom the last couple of days. That's an R, that's the um, remotely operated air vehicle. And I would have loved to get it more compact, but I needed to put an autopilot on there, an autopilot microcontroller. I needed to put on a, an engine microcontroller, a gyro. And so all these things take up a lot of space. And so that, that really makes it so that uh, you have to kind of plan accordingly, and I find it really fun. One of my favorite challenges I participated in recently was the Big Man Challenge, and some of the restrictions on there, I find the restrictions make it really challenging and fun. For example, Big Man had it so that you could only have a three-cylinder engine in there, and the car had to be pretty compact, and it had to have four seats, and because it needed these things, you really had to engineer well, and it made, you know, the engineering, put the engineering in this engineering game. And so that was a lot of fun. So I love building little things like this. It can be kind of uh, challenging and fun to do. All right, so I don't know where we want to go yet. Let's look at some containers. We're definitely not going to BVG. I don't think we'd even be able to... We can't get up there in that time anyways. Let's look. 
Let us. I'm just interested. Uh, we're not. We're definitely not going up to BVG. But let's set a waypoint. It is. I can't see the waypoints. Let's put them on so we can see them. So that is 117 kilometers to there. So talk 117 kilometers. I'm probably. I think Trent could probably do around 40 kilometers an hour, something like that. What is 2.2.28 miles per hour? I'm not exactly sure what. Um, what the knot, knots would be. I think it's two and change. So you're talking, you know, you're talking, it would probably be, what, three hours maybe at least. So like this, you know, you, you're you not making that in that amount of time. You're going to have to do uh, some sort of air transport, which I love. You know, I can put it on a plane. The problem is one of the issues that I think I would love to see the devs address is I think their devs are getting much better and better with the way they're designing these land masses. For example, uh, Industrial Frontier being the most recent, there are bases like FJ, and FJ has a rail terminal, it has a container port, it has a sh uh, two ship workbenches, and it has an airport. And what that allows me to do is I can put containers on trains, trucks, airplanes, ships. I can put containers on anything, and then I can run them off from there if I want. They also added a bunch of these bases, like there's a car base here, which is free. I think you might have to buy this. I'm not sure if uh, this one comes free at all. But um, you can put cars, and there's no roof, so that's nice for launching helicopters. You can also go around areas like uh, Liam's Garage, which is somewhere around here. Uh, I know uh, Zizo's gas station, that has a free car workbench. Liam's has a free car workbench. So if you start on the Industrial Free Frontier Island, this is actually where I would recommend beginners start now. Is if you go to North Meyer Outpost as your beginner base, you have your small boat, plus you have a car, plus you have a hospital right there. You can go do a rescue, come back, jump in your car, drive over there. You also can do uh, gold and you can do some oil here. And then you have a couple of other free land bases, which are really cool. And the devs did a really good job, I think, with starting adding more of these multifunction ports. What I would love to see is them to do a little pass in the Arctic where, for example, BVG is not great. And part of the reason BVG is not great and part of the reason why I made this container mover is there's no place for me to spawn one of my container uh, moving vehicles. So I can't unload the train. I can't get a truck in here. I can't, I can get a ship in here, kind of. Uh, there's no place for me to unload the ship. You know, I can unload Triton because I have the crane, so I can put the containers here, but then I have no way to move them unless I have a vehicle like the one we're using right now. And so what I'd love to see the devs add, and there's no inter-container transport in the Arctic. You pretty much have to go from the south up there. And so especially if you're using ships and you're going to take hours to get up there, it's nice if you can transition, go up there, and then stay in the Arctic for a little while. And so one thing that would help that is you know, give us an outside bench here that we can spawn a vehicle to go do this. You know, it's not a big deal now that we have this vehicle, we could do that. But we'd have to sail all the way back. What would be nice is add a container port to Tajin. You know, we can spawn land vehicles in the hangar here. We can also spawn ships here. And so what would be nice is if they put a container port here or down here on the dock, what it would allow us to do is we could fly from FJ with a container, bring it up to Tajin, and then drive the container down and deliver it. And that would be awesome. That would really give us a nice multifunction base that would allow us to do all those types of missions. So that would be really cool to see. Because like those containers, I can't get them up there on a ship. Or in, you're in freight. That's five grand. So I'm just checking the money wise. Let's go ahead and we'll get this thing uh, rolling with us. I, uh, I'm going to put a paint block there with a smile probably at some point. It looks like eyes coming at me. So we'll get this, uh, we'll just keep having this move with us here. But I love these little builds, especially they're much more challenging. Like I have some big container movers. They're not hard to get the containers on. This one was a challenge to get it to work because it has to be perfect. Uh, spy cakes, the cakes of spy, Komodo. Maybe we'll hit urine on the way by. The problem, again, urine has an, another issue. That's a good Komodo. The issue with urine freight, uh, urine uh, power plant here, where we can deliver some of these, is we, if you bought this base, there are three sea-based workbenches. There's no land base, so I could do it with this vehicle, 
because this uh, container mover, I can move on and off with the crane, but that makes it a disadvantage for a lot of people. If you put a little car base there, it would allow you to uh, launch something that you could move with, you know, and some people are going to need a crane to be able to do that. So this one's really good. This one is 11,000. We have 189 minutes left, so we'll probably we'll be able to get that. That is Komodo. So I did want to stop at our private island, but that's all right. We can actually go up to Komodo. It's pretty close. So Spy, that's not great. That's six, but Spy Cakes is a reasonable grab. Let's go ahead. We're going to energize this just so that I know that's a possibility. This is Komodo 5, 17 minutes. We're never going to make that one, so we're not going to bother with that. Here we have a, that's BVG, we already talked about that one. That's a urine for five. So I could unload these at urine, but I can't, um, I could do it, but that's only five. So we'll keep that in mind. This one we definitely are going to want, because this one's 11. It has a lot of time, so this can stay on board. So we might come back for the urine uh, freight ones here. All right, so what we want to do is, this is kind of neat how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and back up. And I'm going to press the 1 key and now the 2 key. And this is going to go forward. All right now I want to press the left arrow and the uh, jaws are going to slide out. And we're going to go and we'll attach. All right, good. Now it's attached. I want to pull us in. And I want to, I don't want to pull us in that much. There we go. Right about there is good. And now I'm going to press 1. And it's going to pull it up and on to the mover. Now I'm going to press 3. You'll notice that that will detach and those will stow. We'll go ahead and we'll move this in. And this is kind of like an inchworm. This was inspired by the motion of an inchworm. As you can see, there are a bunch of these uh, systems that work like this IRL. There's, for example, hydraulic walking floors that uh, work like this on the back of trucks, uh, trailers rather. And that allows them to, for example, unload uh, light things like mulch. There we go. And so we are now all set here. And this is on board. So I'm going to just, um, I'm going to no clip a little here because, of course, you know, IRL, if I was strong enough, I could just jump up and grab the, the lip. And I think this is a little bit more fun. And plus, I'm going to probably end up uh, time lapsing you guys around here as I move these. So I'll see you guys when we get back. So here we are. So if I if I uh, shut off the remote, it will automatically set the brake. All right. So now to get this off, we're going to go ahead and we'll press 4. Now it's adhered to the jacking unit there. And we're going to go press 4 again. And so something like this is very, very sensitive with the uh, with the mass and the center of mass. This This thing weighs less than that container does. And because of that, you have to really get the physics just right, and you have to engineer it correctly, or else you're going to run into problems. And so that was a good challenge, and I really enjoyed the challenge of that. So as you can see, it just inchworms along. I was trying to make it a little bit more elegant where it unloads more like the way it does, but I just can't get the physics to work right because it would rather flip this unit than it would to actually uh, push it off. So what I want to do is I get to about there. We'll try to inchworm it a little bit more. All right, that's it. That's max it there. And then what we'll do is we'll press one, and it will push us off like so. As you can see, so pretty cool there. That is how this sucker works. All right, so it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty simple. Works well. We don't need that bottom connector on right now, so we'll shut it off. Always good to shut those off. It saves you some heartache if they do something crazy. All right, so we've got another one here for Komodo. This one is 6K. It says 80 minutes left on it, which is pretty good time. We should have no problem getting over there. You know, the world of, tri of uh, Stormworks is pretty, pretty small, actually. You know, so it's, the distances are not all that much. So even like a ship of like Triton, which moves realistically, you know, it speeds, I think, within, I think it, it speeds within a couple knots of the real speed. It, um, 
you know, it has it's very quick to get around. So should have no problem getting there. Okay, let's press one. There we go. All right, nice. And we'll go ahead and press three to stow the uh, grabbers there. Four, we'll inch this up. Having a little bit of physics problem with the tracks. It's the, it's actually the pivots. The pivots are wobbly. So it's the, it's found it's the pivots which cause a little bit of issue. So I need to make sure I just don't extend it all the way down the track. All right, press uh, four rather there. And three again as well. And we're good to go. So I will catch up with you guys when I get this container back over there. All right, so arriving here at, with the next container. Go ahead and we'll dump this one off. I'm going to dump it right next to it. Uh, Triton's crane can handle these from quite a distance, and so I want to double stack these. I could hold up to five, and so I'm going to put the outs. I'm going to put this one snuggled up right next to the other one. That way, I can lift it. I I want to leave at least a two gap, and the reason is uh nah, actually it should be theoretically nah. We'll leave a two gap. Two gaps always safe. That will keep prevent the tops from grabbing each other and causing physics problems. So go ahead, and I will. Let's up. Uh, Stop that. Okay. And so I'm going to put it right there, and that way I should be able to reach over. Yeah, that's within Triton's reach. We'll grab this one, and then I'll stack it on top, and then we'll pull them both. So that way that will work for us. All right. So we're going to inchworm this off. So I want to – excuse me. I have a, I have the trim set on this. I need to stop the trim. There we go. All right, good. And if I just press the uh, left mouse key, that shuts off the, the controller. And that prevents, uh, that automatically sets the brakes on it. So so if I want to stop, I just press that and it will hard stop me. All right, so we're going to want to go all the way to the right. We have it. We're going to press four. It automatically disconnects the grippers and it will automatically disconnects the grippers and it uh, connects the magnet. So. I like this too. It's also a good, nice, engaging way to do it. It's a little bit more than some of the super automated systems where, like, you know, my favorite thing and what I've always been interested in is being an equipment operator. I've been an equipment operator my whole life, and it's what I really have a passion for. And so it's, I like to actually be the person working the machine. And so it's important to me to actually do some of this work, you know. It's, it's what I find to be the most fun. And so it's, uh, you know, if something's automated, it doesn't really interest me because it's like, well, what am I doing here? I'm just a passenger. It's much more fun to be the operator than the passenger. You know, so that's that's kind of my whole take on it. Uh, so two containers. All right, I'll see you when we get over there. All right, so here we have our last container. I did a quick little look around, and we don't have any more for Komodo. Uh, we have one that's going to expire, but we don't have any more for Komodo. This one is for SPAC cakes, and so I'm going to go ahead and grab this one. That um, you know, might as well seeing that we're here. Three. All right, and let's go ahead and press one. Up, up, oh! So I need to press two. Up. Oh, what did I? Okay, press one again. Not the end of the world. I pressed the wrong key. I had my hands in the wrong keys, and I actually didn't shut it off. So. Okay, let's go. Out and re grab. Again, because this thing is pretty small, you really have to be pretty... Okay, I'm backwards. Never mind. This is... Uh, I, I can't load this backwards. It doesn't have the right geometry. And oh, this is right. Okay. So let's do... This is correct. I need to grab this here. I need to press 3. I didn't know if I had the uh, connectors on. There we go. Okay, good. We have the connectors on now. So because of its small stature, you really have to get the the pivoting just right and it's not behaving itself probably because it's uh just the weight of it this one could be a little bit heavier so what i want to do here is i'm going to put on some forward motion and then i'm going to do it and there we go so the drive wheels are helping it move in that case and then i'll just shut off that little bit of trim i did there so what I could do, which would be kind of interesting, is I could set it up so that it does the drive wheels when I do that 
motion with that and I did that move. That could be a thought, so all right, I'll go ahead and press the uh activation key there. And I just like doing it from this side. This way, you know, the keys would be inverted if I do it from the other side. So by doing it this way, you can tell that those uh, indicator lights, they're different. So the top tells me the grippers on top are locked. The bottom one tells me the mag alt that's on the arm is locked. So when I press that, as you can see, now it's telling me the arm is dislocked, is unlocked, and the grippers are now locked. So that tells me we're good to go. And you want to put it in the center of gravity. As you can see, that's right in the center of gravity of the base. Put the center of gravity of the container there. It works well. All right. So this is going to be our last container. I'm going to put this on charge, and then we'll load up the Triton. And so we'll get the batteries topped off on this, and then we can load this up. And this will go with us. So, for example, Sawyer South is a pain because Sawyer South does not have any place for me to spawn this. Talked about BBG doesn't have a place for to spawn this. Urine doesn't. JSI. There are a bunch of bases. And, you know, I've talked about, you know, it would be nice if the devs could add bases there, but the silver lining is I would probably never have built this if there were ba if every base had it. So that is kind of the silver lining of having some bases that are different. So I'm not completely opposed with them having some of the bases where we don't have that option at all, but it would be kind of cool to maybe have it. And, you know, I don't know. I'm, I'm a little bit torn. I would love them to add what I was talking about earlier to Tajum where we can do air stuff as well, because there is, for example, this uh, orange container there is worth 47,000 and that's going to BBG. So if I took that up with an airplane, that would be well worth the trip, especially if I took another one with me that's worth like um, around 30, you know, we're, you're now talking, we are getting 70 to 80,000 for that one trip up to the Arctic in a plane that's really cool, but I would have to fly up to Tajin, dump them off, and then I'd have to uh, fly them across to make it, you know, and so that starts to make it less uh, likely I'm going to do it. Or I could finally finish my VTOL, my large VTOL container mover that's uh, shaped like a plane, that's an actual plane instead of kind of a goofy gamey thing, and uh, do it that way, but that needs a bunch of work. So maybe I'll get back into working on that thing a little bit. That one's complex. It's a four-engine jet VTOL, and so to make it work as a jet is a little bit of a challenge. You know, it'd be much easier for his propeller, but that's why I did it as a jet was it was for the challenge. I enjoy the challenge. So we're gonna go ahead. We'll put these last this last one over there. We'll take a three stack. Uh, you know, so it's going to be cool to have this. I wanted, for example, last time I wanted to get some JSI, but I had no vehicle uh, that really worked all that well that I could carry on Triton and do this sort of work. So this will be loaded into Triton's garage, this vehicle, and that's going to make it, uh, I think, a little bit more fun to operate it. So I may not double stack these. I may single stack them. I'll probably double stack them just because it's easier to get off of the dock, you know, to unload it when we get there. So we'll go ahead and we'll drop this one off and then we will spawn Triton, load this vehicle up into Triton, and then we will uh, load the containers and then we'll probably go underway and we'll see what we want to do next. But this is a cool tool and I'm, uh, I'm happy with how it turned out. All right, so we'll unload this last one here. So the nice thing too is the container can doesn't really go anywhere so we can put it right there. All right, big up. And I want to go ahead and we will go all the way back. I'll press four. And so the reason it's doing that rotation, that's a an issue with the, it's phantom forces with the linear tracks, break, essentially breaking the pivots is what it's doing. So it's um kind of, I'm just I'm just letting this drive a little bit. I don't want these too close together. In real life, you'd never be able to scrape it like this, but that's kind of the benefit of you know you got to be careful what you wish for. You know, people talking about you know everything's like super slippery in game. The benefit of things being super slippery in game is that we can do things like this where I can push a container. If you didn't have that, you would never be able to push these containers. It would make a horrific noise. You need a lot of torque. You would end up you know damaging it. By having things that are a little bit slidey, it allows us to have a little bit of um, leeway on some of the stuff. And we'll do the last push. All 
Okay, and I'll press 1. There we go. I'm jammed up on this, so I have to check this. I'm jammed up. I need to see what I want to do here with this. There we go. So I'm kind of stuck to it here. So I was having this issue before. I need to kind of play with it to get it off there. Okay, there we go. All right, so not too bad. Let's go ahead and back this up. So this is it, and it's fully stowed mode. As you can see, it's nice and compact. I just want to get this over. I'm going to throw in the charge while I get Triton going, and then that will... Uh, you see, if you can look down the dock there, you can see I still have the container loader over there. That's where I left it last time. So I'm actually going to reverse Triton to get him over here. I wasn't... You know, I d didn't really have much space over there. Oops, excuse me. Pardon me. All right, so we'll park this right here, and I'll put this on charge. Oops, excuse me. Pardon me. All right, but good. So this goes in its uh, controller carriage. You see we're down to 50%. If we look at our batteries, we're down to 62%. So it's 40%. And we're going to go ahead. We'll uh, shut the breaker off. I think I can still charge the batteries with the breaker off. We'll see. And we'll plug this in. And we should pretty quickly recharge. As you can see, we'll unplug this. All right, we'll get this configured for loading. So we'll set that to, uh, I need to put on the breaker again. All right, there, so lock it in the vertical position. We'll set this to the middle. All right, about there is good. All right, and we'll go stick that in there. We need to leave the power on. All right, go ahead and I'll jump on the deck here and we will, whoop, whoop, in the drink, in the drink. Actually, while I'm no clipping, we'll just go ahead down to the engineering here, speed things up a little bit. So we'll go ahead and we'll turn on master power there. We'll go close that. Batteries, generators, harbor generators, and that's on. All right, and we'll go ahead and we'll head out, or up to the bridge rather. I'm going to shut off vehicle damage here because we're going to be docked. And again, the fenders would protect us from damaging the ship. They don't in game. And so we could just have a random explosion bumping up against the dock. So do that to enhance reality. All right. Helm systems. I don't actually don't need the engines on. Let's leave the engines off. Harbor generator will come on if we need them. We'll just thrust over. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the container loader into the garage. That will go in the garage, and then we'll be ready to move here. Cam. I don't know why the cam's not working. Okay, so there we go. We should be up against the dock here. We are, I think. All right, I'm just going to uh, go down to the crane. I'm going to do a jump here. All right. We'll grab this tool. This tool we do not need. And so this tool can get plugged in right here. All right, and then we'll grab this one. And this is the winch attachment, so... All of these work with the same function system that I have there. So essentially I have eight function buttons and they all do different things, but it gives me a little variety of everything. So I have it. So we have a rope on us as well. Go ahead. We'll get up in the crane and we will attach the winch. And so first thing I need to do is take off the, I need to take off the panel for the garage. So I have two panels. This is how they do my RL. They have these panels and they'll use a crane to get them off. You know, you have different panels to access lower parts of the ship. And so that's what I'm doing this. So could put a hinge on there. No, no interest in putting a hinge on there. I prefer this. I like to actually operate the machinery, so I don't need to make it gamey. I want to make it more realistic than gamey. So these are directional. We found that out in the live stream that 
they are directional. So what I added was these arrows. These are orientation arrows to tell you what direction they have to point in order to get them to reattach. So we'll drop this panel. All right, so the panel's detached now. And we'll pull this out and just stick it on the deck there in front. So here are four of my functions. There are the other four. So that gives me, like, these are toggles. These are pushes. Uh, some of these, I think, are pushes and toggles. So that gives me pretty much all, this, all I would need in order to do everything. All right, so panel is now set on the deck. And so that orientation arrow, again, tells me which way it has to go. If I put it on backwards, it will not reattach. And so that orientation arrow just point them at each other. And then this is a panel for the engine room. That's mostly RP. You know, IRL, you'd have to worry about pulling large components of your engine out. You imagine if you need to replace some batteries. You know, you don't want to carry them up the staircase. So what you would do is you would uh, pull that panel, and then you'd use this crane, in the case of this ship, or a crane. You know, it might be a shore-based crane to actually load those parts. And you imagine some really large engine parts. You would need to crane them in and out. All right, so we'll go right there. Where is the, where is the container mover? Okay, it's further to right. There it is. All right, and we'll go grab that. I'm just gonna no clip. Yeah, this is essentially me changing characters. You'd have somebody with a radio on the ground here. You'd have somebody in the crane who would also have a radio, and you would just, you know, be ah, breaking your ankle. You would. Uh, you know, be in communication, telling them what to do. You'd have people on the on the deck here with some ropes that would be attached to the corners of that, helping to guide it in. We don't have any of that, so I just kind of do it myself. I'll grab a quick uh, screenshot of this. I think it's going to be a fun pick. Lifting that up there. There we go. So that's uh, that's kind of fun to be able to haul this in. It's one of the things I like. I like having all these little vehicles and stuff that operate on Triton. That's one of the reasons this late, kind of late game stuff is my favorite. Is it really? It's really fun. Like I, I built a drone to work with this ship, and so this ship's going to have a drone room that will be able to operate a bunch of different drones. And so now that I'm going to have a drone room, I want to build more remotely operated vehicles. So submarine is coming with, you know, with the pressurization update. I'm really interested in doing submarine. Hell, maybe we'll make a, a missile or, or missile. Maybe we'll make a rocket that can go up to the moon that launches off Triton. So like all these things are kind of cool stuff that you can do, uh, you know, when you have a vehicle like this. And so that really adds a lot of gameplay. So we'll load this right into the garage. Easy peasy, breezy, beautiful cover girl. Okay, good. I'm just going to stop it here. We'll do a little bit of a cheaty, cheaty here where I go across. Instead of me going down to the garage and disconnecting that, again, you have many people in the ship. I would, you know, you'd tell somebody, okay, uh, detach the rope. And then, uh, so you're not jumping out of the crane all the time. So we're going to attach to the panel. And uh, where are we at here? Just lose my rope. There we go. I'm attached to something else, I think. Okay. Let me make sure I get this right, the correct rope anchor. There we go. All right, good. So we have that attached. I'm just going to do a precautionary save here. All right, that way, if something screws up, I've had issues with these panels before. They're a little bit tricky to get in and out. And again, I'm by myself. I don't have the help of people on the ground actually using guide ropes to help get this in there. So because I don't have that, I need to do it all myself. And so if I screw it up, I want to be able to just quickly reset the save and get it fixed. So we're going to go right over it. So I dragged it in close. I need to go up with the boom. The boom is the first segment. The stick is the second segment. And I'm going to go vertical right over that. So the the crane and everything was engineered so that these would work together like this. So I kind of know the positions. So these aren't the best having it set up like this on these functions because they both can be selected and that can screw you up at times. All right, so right there, I want to take the slack out. So like right there. And so I want a little bit of slack and I'm going to go down there 
you would have people with ropes on the corners and they would be able to just gently push it and pull it. And even though the door would weigh a lot, you would still be able to move it like that. So what we want to do here is I'm going to press this. I'm going to turn that on. And so as soon as that will get uh, close to being in its slot, it will uh, it will adhere. So I'm going to just go down just a hair. All right, so that I took all the weight off of it. So the deck is holding the weight now. So as I align this, it should be able to fall in just a little bit. Probably need just one more tap of that button. And that way I can get it right where it needs to go. There we go. Let's try that. I really don't want this to fall in the hole. There we go. Look at that. All right, so now that is close. And we should be able to get this attached here. I'm just going to come down a little bit. And this way I can wiggle it to try to get it to attach. So we need to come out a little bit with the stick, which is the second segment there. Just up a little bit. There we go. And it attaches. So beautiful. So it is now aligned and attached, and we're good. So I'm going to just, we can leave that. Um, actually, we need to pull that off. So we'll grab that off here. Store a rope. Should have loaded the crane, but I got excited and got moving here. So we'll lower this down, and I'll grab this attachment off. You don't want your crane moving too fast. That's a mistake I see a lot of people make. The same thing applies in real life as it does in game. You do not want these things to be super fast. You know, force is mass times acceleration. The faster you have something moving, the more force it has. And so if you... You know, you, like, think about swinging a baseball bat. If you have a big, heavy baseball bat and you swing it fast, it takes you longer to stop its motion, and it's going to try to tip your body as it continues its motion wherever it's going. And the same thing happens with a crane. You know, as, the, as you're trying to stop the crane, it keeps wanting to move, and if you stopped it instantly, that force has to go somewhere, and that would tip your boat. And so by keeping it nice and slow and steady here, you'll actually be quicker... You know, it's, it's sometimes quicker to be slow than it is to be fast. And what's meant by that is you make a lot of mistakes trying to rush. If you take your time, it's often a lot quicker. So what we're going to do is we'll actually back up to get closer to those containers. I have like three things in all disparate areas. I oh, thought I was further away. So I'm going to line this out here pretty close to the ground. Right about there. And I'm going to try to push this. If I have problems, I'll move the ship up. But I'm going to try to just push this container mover. Should be able to do it. Of course, this thing would be incredibly heavy IRL. But, again, the benefit of the little bit of cartooniness in the game. You know, some people think that the devs don't think about these things. I think they do. It's stuff like this, why things are extra slidey. Imagine this would be made out of steel. It would be very, very heavy. There's no way in hell a human would be able to move it. Plus, it would have a lot of friction on the ground. Well, guess what? You'd have to get this precisely in the right position. You'd have to go get a piece of equipment and move it. It would be very tedious. By having a little bit of a cartoony nature where we can push things like that, it just makes it so much easier, and it makes the game much more approachable. And so I think that some of those decisions are made in that point. There's a, you know, I'm a huge fan of realism and simulators, but there is a point where it becomes... Very, where it can become tedious and time-consuming, and you lose a lot of your audience doing that. And so you have to make it, you know, for a niche audience where with this, you know, adding that little cartoony element allows people to build some fantasy builds, do some stuff like that, but also it cuts down the tedium a little bit because this would take probably twice as long if I had to go get a cart or a, a front end loader or something to push that closer pick it up I'd have to move the ship forward instead of being able to push it with my character's body like what we're, we're gonna do now is we're gonna uh, engage the engines and we're just gonna back up a little bit and that uh, and that will get us there you know we would have had to go forward uh, to hook that up if I didn't do that so it's um it's nice to be able to just do this So I'm currently reversing here. It takes a little second for it to get going. There we go. 
And so I'm just going to back up closer to that ladder. And that's going to allow me to reach these containers. This crane has a really good long reach, both in and across. And that makes it so that it's very easy. And again, you wouldn't want an IRL be scraping on the dock like this. You know, but you would uh, also, you'd have like 20 people working the dock, move, moving those containers for me. So these are the little things that I do to kind of make it a little bit more doable by, um, you know, using the using some of these methods. All right, good. All right, we're going to shut off the diesels. And so we'll leave those on. I'm just going to no clip over to the crane just to save a little bit of time. All right, and we'll go on in, and we'll start hooking. Uh, again, I'm going to switch to my character on the dock. The dock personnel. All right, so this is going to go... We'll go three across. There's no point in me stacking these at the moment. So we'll go grab, grab. I want the bottoms off. And I'm going to try not to hit any of these connectors together. So all the top is connected. And we'll get in the crane here. I like doing things from first person, too. It's, you know, a lot of this is... It's definitely, it's a it's a trade, it's a skill, it's a profession to be an equipment operator. You know, I've done this for, wow, a long time now, 20-something <laughs> years, you know, and you start to get, you know, you start to get good at it. You start to, it feels like an extension of your body doing some of these things. And that's, you know, that's why, like, I don't mind a really restrictive view because I kind of know some tricks of the trade from my own operation of, cranes and forklifts and stuff of how to visualize these things. I'm trying to pull that in. Let's see if I'm doing it right here. There we go. Okay. So container one getting loaded here. Grab another screenshot. I like to have some screenshots. You know, it, it kind of chronicles what's going on and I think it's fun and I love sharing them. You know, a big part of enjoying the community, I think, and especially getting inspired, is sharing your pictures. You know, somebody was asking why I don't release all, you know, they asked me why I keep showing pictures of this build if that's not a build I'm going to release. And part of it is, you know, I'm just sharing what I'm making, man. It's like, for example, you might show off your car that you're working on in your garage, right? That doesn't mean you're going to give it to somebody for free because you showed a picture of your car saying, hey, look at this thing I'm proud of that I'm working on. You know, and I do release a lot of stuff, but, you know, just like anybody, I have things that, you know, I, I hold on to, I'm not going to release. And it's, um, you know, I, just because somebody puts it on, you know, shows pictures of it doesn't mean they're going to release it. And they don't owe you that build. You know, that's their work. All right. So I, I talked about this before. Because these hard points are flexible, look at this. See how this is bending? That's great. See how this has a gap? These are these are pretty rigid. This bends and this bends. And so even though we were pretty far off with this container, I did not destroy this. And I would have destroyed that if it was all super, super duper uh, taut. And so by having a little bit of flex in there, it allows me to do that stuff. You notice nothing went crazy. I didn't have physics problems. So a lot of these, you know, what uh, Kerbal would call clang can be addressed by having a little bit of flexibility in your stuff. You know, you want sacrificial elements that are uh, are more likely to bend or snap. You know, there are, for example, there's things known as shear pins. You know, I have one in my snowblower. If I sucked a rock up into the snowblower, you don't want it to destroy the motor of the snowblower. That's expensive. You don't want it to destroy an expensive part of the snowblower. So what you do is you have a shear pin that if you were to suck up a rock and eat a rock in the snowblower, it would break this little sacrificial pin that is actually filed down in the middle so that it breaks. And if the shear pin breaks, it's going to hopefully make it so that nothing else breaks. And you just grab another shear pin, you stick it in to uh, where it needs in the shaft, and bingo, you're off to the races. And it didn't cost you more than a couple cents. You know, it's why they have sacrificial anodes on ships to protect from corrosion. You know, so you have these sacrificial elements. So... That's kind of like what I'm doing with this is if something's going to bend, I want it to be this container carriage. If that gets glitched out and broken, that's fine. You know, I just don't want the whole ship to go, you know, careening 
every time I try to connect a container or else that's really going to cause you problems. You know, like, for example, if you have two gaps, they won't try to grab each other as badly. You notice, so everything's grabbing comfortably and it's not shaking the, the ship. It's not causing a bunch of physics problems. All right, so let's get grab this last one here. It's an oops, so hopefully we don't uh, drop it on the ground, as its name would suggest. And so for stowage, what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to detach the hard point of the crane, and I'm going to leave the, the container shifter hooked to that yellow crate. That way it's stowed, and I don't have to uh, put it anywhere else. Bingo. Look at that. All right. So, you know, so much of any of this equipment operation, be given a good equipment operator is like anything in life. Practice, practice, practice. So, you know, if you're always in third person, you know, you're never going to figure out how to do it in first person, you know, which is fine if you like third person. But, you know, to get good at first person, you got to practice with it. It's like anything else. And it is, you know, it's a skill. You know, there are people who do equipment operation all day long. You know, like I have for many years, and, you know, you get good at it by just doing it, man. You know, practice, practice, practice. There's no shortcut. You have to practice. And it's the same thing with this. Like, I, I get pretty good at this crane now because I've done a lot of practice with it. You know, it also, this has, crane has a lot of good articulation. I've talked about this segment here. That is controlled by a tilt sensor. It always points down. And part of that is I don't want this shaking. Uh, you know, I could just do a pivot, and it would work fine like a knuckle boom, and it would shake. But I have to wait for the shaking to stop. This automatically dampens that shaking. It keeps the shaking to a minimum. I don't have to wait for it to stop moving. So I'm going to check the gap. That's important to make sure the containers don't try to grab each other. I'm going to go ahead and we'll detach the top. Actually, we want to leave those attached. Attach the bottoms. All right, good. So that's set up. And what I want to do here is I'm going to put a little gentle pressure on the crane. So I'll put a little gentle up pressure on the crane. It doesn't have to be a lot, just a little bit. You see, again, we have that flex. See how that flexes? That's protecting us from having a physics problem. It gives it, that's going to sacrifice. That's going to let go before anything else. And that protects us from having a physics problem. Because if you have two immobile objects, the game is going to freak out. So... And as you can see, that will gap us, and that's going to give us enough gap that hopefully shouldn't uh, reattach. And so that little bit of pressure on the crane allowed me to, you know, I don't have to have a button to disconnect that. I can just do it by hand. And it makes it a little more interactive for me. All right, good. So this is going to come in, the boom. I'll go ahead. I'll press the space bar. That's my uh, space bar. I think it's the space bar. Uh, four. Four is the locks for this crane, so we're going to lock it up. So we're all loaded here. So three containers. We have the container mover. The, the way I set the ship up, as you can see, I can still get to my container mover even with that. Even with the containers on board, I can still get to my garage. So that was, you know, took a little while, to, you know, of, of thinking and pre-planning, but that allows me to open this up and get vehicles out while we're loaded with containers, so that's very helpful. All right, let's go ahead and we'll start to, I'm going to do another precautionary save here. If your containers are set up right on the deck, you should not uh, really have to worry about saving like that. Some people worry about if you have containers on deck, you should never save or you can't save. You can do it. You just need to have your stuff set up correctly. All right, starboard anchor is set, but it's set to the deck. It's not set on the ground, so we're fine there. Let me just double check, make sure we didn't grab the dock at all. We shouldn't have. Nope, we're good. So I'm going to come up with a port anchor. We'll try to get the port anchor set. All right, and we'll turn on our diesels. All right, here we go. We're going to go underway. So we should be synced to port. That's fine. We're going to go up on both. I'm going to desync to port. And now I'm going to come forward a little bit on, star on port. rather. As you can see, that's going to push us out.
But our stern's going to come in. So what do I do? I counter that with a little bit. That's maybe, what, 20, 30 degrees? There's, um, that's, yeah, probably about 30 degrees right there. And so that's going to make us go out diagonally. A little bit too much rudder there. I need a little bit less. So the, the port screw is trying to turn our bow out, and the rudder there is pushing it. And now we're going to round this. Press the wrong key. All right, good. So now we're going to start to, we'll desync, we'll catch up on starboard, and we'll start pushing them both forward. All right, there we go, 19 knots. So we have full fuel. I added fuel gauges on this. I didn't have those on. Let's go ahead and set our course. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to sail a little bit further here. Let's get our mast up. We want to be legal. We don't want the Coast Guard to pull us over. I still have to fix this. This this is, is broken, but sh you can see we have fuel. our fuel. We are full of pretty close to full in fuel. We're not completely full in fuel. As you can see. So there's 30 in there, and that's, uh, what's that, 82? I have to check these. These don't look right, and we're turning off course here. I need to fix that. Let me make sure starboard caught up. It did, okay. Just wanted to check. Sometimes if it's off sync, we'll do that, and we need to get the thrusters centered. All right, so we have a couple options here. We can... We can go up through the drawbridge, or the, uh, the tall bridge. We, d we don't have a tall bridge here until we get up here. So we'd have to go sail all the way north and across. Uh, we're going up here anyway, so I still want to go diagonal. I think I think that's going to be fastest, of course. So we're going to aim just north of this island here. And so what I'll actually do is I'll draw my first line. We'll course up here, and then we'll go around. What is this? That's transport people to the oil rig. Okay. So we'll go ahead. We'll center up the our line there. And I'm just going to come in. I want to make sure I don't hit any hit anything. So we're going to come south of the solar island there. We'll add a waypoint. And I'm just going to inspect it first. Make sure we're not going to hit that island. We're good. And then I'll go ahead and I'm going to put up another waypoint here. And the final waypoint there. I'm going to have to redo this if I save, so I'll just let it run. All right, there's our final waypoint. I'm going to reset it. I'm going to zoom out. I'm just going to inspect the course to make sure that we're not running into any islands. Bingo. Okay, good. So that's set, so the autopilot will come on. We get an A for the autopilot light. Again, this is not my system. This is somebody else's system that I have worked on. And change some stuff. So let me check the cameras. I thought I fixed all the cameras, but maybe I didn't. There are a couple cameras. It's six and seven I need to fix. There's probably an electrical problem. I worked on them on a live stream. I put them on the on the port and the starboard uh, stern, as you can see there. So that allows me to use those for docking. All right, so we're going to reset. We'll go back here. So underway again in Triton is nice. And thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye.